Welcome back, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Jonathan, and I like discovering new things. Kind of like if I were to ask you what's your favorite ice cream. Go ahead and tell me. Yeah, my favorite ice cream is cookies and cream. It's amazing what we find out when we focus on something. When you take a closer look, you notice things that you've never seen before. You might even learn about something that you can't see because of what you can see. That reminds me of our relationship with God. We can discover more about Him every day if we take the time to focus on God. Today, we are discovering another way to focus on God, and that is talking about Him. See kids, the more you talk about what you believe, the more you can learn from others and the more others can learn from you. But before we dig deeper, let's go to Kelly and start our game. Welcome back everybody, I'm Kelly. This one's called Guess Em All. First, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen. Also, ask a parent or older brother or sister or whoever you live with and see if they wanna help you play the game too. You can pause this video while you grab that pen and paper and see who else wants to help you play. Ready, go! All right, you're about to see a series of random images, 30 of them to be exact. When the video is over, you'll try to remember as many of those random items as you can. The answers don't have to be in order. Just write down as many of them as you can remember on your piece of paper. But here's the most important part. You can't write anything while the video is playing, okay? You have to wait until after it ends. All right, let's do this. Remember, don't write anything down. Just watch the video and try to remember everything you see. Three, two, one, go! Now, let's see how many you can remember. You've got 30 seconds to write down your answers. Ready, go! how you did. We'll show the answers and you can pause the screen and see how many you got right. If you have any of the items written on your paper, put the check mark next to them. Then add up your total. All right, here we go. Did you have some of those answers written down on your paper? How many? Oh, nice job. <laughs> I know that took some serious focus. Now, let's focus on our amazing God by singing and worshiping Him together. Get up on your feet, everybody.
your mouth has to do to create sound any sound every sound sounds like and sounds like wow 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 and even like None of those sounds happened by accident. We were blessed with amazing verbal and linguistic abilities. So blessed, in fact, that even now, as I'm whispering, you can understand me because I'm articulating every word very clearly. <laughs> Humans have amazing skills, right? We can lift up giant boulders. and we can screw in the tiniest screw into very complicated machinery. How did we get to the point where we could do that? Well, some scientists think it happened when we as a species developed speech. Just look at everything going on while I'm talking. Our mouths do such a complicated dance in order to talk that all of our physical skills got better, more precise. Now, if you ever think, Come on, talking, I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> well then try talking without your tongue. Oh, this is incredibly difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, just as important are your lips and teeth. P, D, T, B. Just imagine all of the words you wouldn't be able to say if you couldn't manipulate your mouth this way. What was that? I, I couldn't understand you. <laughs> but it's not just the stuff in our mouth that affects sound, it's also 
the nasal cavity. See, right now, you can probably tell I'm losing a lot of the details in my voice, because we often think that sound only comes out of our mouths, but it also comes out of our nose, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I did. What was that? Mm-hmm. 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 You want to know how much money it would be to mail a package to Indiana? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Very good point, Wilson. The point Wilson is trying to make, none of this would even matter without our vocal cords. The sound comes up out of our throat until it reaches our head, all the way to the top, until it finally comes out of our mouths. Oh, that's so much better. It's changed by our tongue. What do I do now? Same thing we do every day, Samantha. Listen to Kyle talk forever. <laughs> until it finally comes out of our nose. Ah, Ooh. <laughs> Back to normal. <laughs> this still is uncomfortable. You know you can stick your tongue back into your mouth now, right? Ah, that's better. Yeah. Although talking with my tongue out made my throat really dry. I could use some water. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a second. Do I have the power to make that noise every time I tell a dad joke? Uh, we'll, we'll see you in a little bit. We'll be right back after this. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. What type of cheese is not yours? <clears throat> Nacho cheese! <laughs> this is blowing my mind. Uh, 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 what time do ducks wake up in the morning? Die. At the quack of dawn. <gasps> wait, wait, do it again! <laughs> no, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. No. I've literally got millions. Hi kids, welcome back to day three of BBS. Hope you're having a great day. We have kind of a tough craft today, but I think it's pretty cool. I think you will too. So we're gonna just take our time with this one and you can redo the video if you need to go back and see how it was done. And each one of these is gonna look a little bit different. It just depends on how you build your tower. Sometimes life gives us some turns and curves. But you know what? If we look to Jesus, he'll help us figure it out. He's always there for us. So basically today's focus, we're gonna keep our eye on Jesus, is to talk to others about what you believe. Sometimes that's really tough. Just like things in life are tough, with those curves and turns. Sometimes there's things unexpected. And um, what we're gonna build today is a tower with curves and turns. And basically what you wanna have at home are some scissors and a variety of tapes. I have duct tape, basking tape, regular tape, because this is some real construction. So in your BBS packet, you're gonna get your plastic bag and some of the things that are gonna be in it is your paper plate to build the tower. You're gonna have a toilet paper roll, but you may have those at home. So if you have some of those at home or an empty paper towel roll, then you'll wanna go ahead and use that. And then in your BBS packet, you're gonna have some foil and a piece of paper. So there's really no one set way to do this. We're just gonna get started and build from there. So first, what I think will help you is you'll wanna go ahead and take your paper plate and start at an edge and just start cutting a big spiral. So you just kind of, there's nothing written on your plate because I want everybody to just kind of go through things and figure it out, just like life. We ask God to help us figure it out, right? So you just kind of keep cutting in a big spiral. You can see that. And then, <clears throat> so you've got a bit of a spiral going, and it's like a tower that we're gonna tape the roll. I think it's better not to have a real tall roll 
like from a paper towel. If you have a paper towel roll, you want to cut it in half or even in a third. So you take it and put it on the top part of your spiral here. And I'm going to cut my spiral a little bit more <clears throat> to make it a little bit higher. So I'm going to take my masking tape because it's a little bit stronger than regular tape. And so you're just going to tear off. And we're just going to keep going back to our tape and taping the thing together so it stays. It's hard. I had a hard time with it. So you just tape the toilet paper roll to the top of your towel. And you keep doing that until it stays. So you can kind of see. And then what you can do with some of the cardstock paper that you receive is you could maybe cut it in half and then use this as kind of a board on the bottom to tape your toilet paper roll to the bottom of the paper and hopefully it'll stay a little bit better than this one was. So you just take the tape, put it on the roll and then tape it on the paper. I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically the paper is at the bottom there. So it kind of is starting to take shape into a tower. And then what our goal is, is we're like a marble. And we start in life trying to figure our way through some things. But if we just go about our way without Trust in God, learning about God. Watch what could happen. See this marble? It just goes off the path. That's not good. So what we're gonna do with some of the other items that we've got here is we're gonna build up an edge. How many of you have ever been bobsledding? I haven't, but I've seen it on TV. So we take this and build up some edges really cool bobsled edges for our marble. So you just take it and really there's no right or wrong way to do it other than you want to make some edges. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. We're just wrapping it around. It's not easy. But you just, at least foil I thought would be a good product to use because you can bend it real easy. And you just kind of keep going around your spiral with the foil. Then what you can do is you can tape it on the back. So that's why sometimes you need a little bit heavier duty tape than just the regular scotch tape. So you peel that off. It's not always easy. So you might want to just tear yourself a long piece and then just tear little pieces of it off. So. You just start taping it to your spiral. And what I'm doing is I'm taping underneath the tower, I'm trying to tape this foil to it. And so it's starting to take shape there. Do you see this where the foil is kind of going around? And it's like a side to keep the marble in. And also something I thought would be good is you can cut a strip of paper from the cardstock that's in your packet. And what I do is I folded it in half. So you fold it in half. I opened it back up. And that halfway point there, I took the scissors and you can see I cut up to that corner. So if you cut a bunch of strips like this, what it does is it lets you bend the paper and it'll go around your spiral. So this is also a good kind of bumper guard. So you can take this paper, just like you did the foil, and you put it on the outside of your plate, your tower, and you just kind of work with it until you get it to where you want it. And you go back to your tape. I'm gonna use some scotch tape for this, because paper is a little bit easier to tape to paper than the foil. And you just start getting a bunch of tape on your fingers. 
Don't scratch your nails while you have your tape on your fingers. Yes, you can. And then you continue to tape on the bottom and just work this paper around. See, the back of that looks kind of nasty. But what's going to happen is up on top of our tower, now we have a, a guardrail for our marble. So basically, you keep working with it until you get your bunker guards and you have your spiral and you have your toilet paper or your paper towel roll kind of supporting the top of it. And see, it's gonna look something like that. But we're not gonna try it on this one. We've got one that's already made. So what we're gonna do is try it out. <clears throat> so yours may look something similar to this, but it doesn't have to be pretty because sometimes in life we have to figure things out around the turns and the bumps. Okay, this is the tower that we've got. We've finished working on everything. We're ready to test it. Let's see if it works. We've got our marble now. We're gonna put it at the top of the tower and it's the idea is that it's gonna swirl around to the bottom of our tower. All right, we're gonna drop our marble on our tower and see if it makes its way all the way down. All right, here we go. We're gonna help it out a little bit. And there, we made it to the end. Voila! So work with your tower, spend a little bit of extra time with it. The main thing that we wanna focus on is that you can talk to others about what you believe. So focus on Jesus. Have a great day, kids. Yeah, mm, not seeing it. Uh, maybe if you turn it sideways. Mm. Nope. Oh, hey, Kellen here, and I'm looking at an optical illusion. If you look at it a certain way, you're supposed to see a 3D picture pop out. Here, see if you can see it. Do you see it? Hey, it's a dragon eating a donut. No, it's a baseball player using a rubber chicken as a bat. It's just a bird, a normal bird. Yeah, I still don't see it. Okay, but I also have this one here. This is cool. So the lines look like they're moving, but they're actually not. It's playing a trick on our eyes. The way these lines are put together gives them the illusion of movement. Crazy, right? We've been talking this week about taking a closer look at what's around us. When we're taking a closer look, maybe we can see things that we hadn't seen before, or maybe we can see things in a new way. Our Bible story today is asking us to take a closer look into who Jesus is. We're in the book of Matthew, and when we pick up the story in chapter 16, Jesus has already been on the scene for a while. And people are wondering, who is this guy? He's doing miracles. He's feeding the poor. He's hanging out with all kinds of people the rest of the world look down on. He's teaching new things. Who is he exactly? So we read that Jesus was walking down the road and he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? His disciples turned to each other and they didn't answer for themselves. They told him what other people were saying. They told him, Some say you're John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's what the disciples said. But let's say you asked people today, who is Jesus? You would probably hear a lot of different things too. Maybe some would say, he's a great teacher. Some people might say he's a great rabbi or preacher. People might see how he healed the sick and call him a doctor. People might say Jesus is love, that he is the light of the world, that he is a shepherd for his people. People have a lot of different thoughts about who Jesus is. But let's go back to the story now. His disciples had given him answers of what others were saying, but then Jesus asked his disciples, but what about you? Who do you say I am? I wonder if the disciples were scared here. They were put on the spot. Maybe they didn't know exactly who Jesus is, or maybe they didn't want to say what they thought. But here, Jesus was asking them point blank, who do you say that I am? 
they had to answer for themselves. But then, after a moment, Peter spoke up. He too might have been scared or unsure, but he said this, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus is many of those things we listed, but Peter recognized he is so much more. And here's the thing, you're invited to recognize the same thing. If you see that Jesus is the Messiah and ask him to be a part of your life, he can and he will continue to change your life forever. Now, Jesus went on to tell Peter that his answer was revealed to him by God and that Peter will be the rock that he would build the church on. Now, here's the thing about Peter. He wasn't perfect. He said some pretty wild things and made some pretty big mistakes. But he was honest and he wasn't scared to say what he was thinking or ask questions of Jesus or other people. Peter took a closer look at Jesus. He saw the way Jesus loved, the way he taught, the way he changed the world. Peter realized Jesus is the Messiah. We can learn a lot by being honest and asking questions just like Peter. You can talk with people about what you believe. Especially, talk with people in your life that you can trust, like your parents or your small group leaders. The more you talk about what you believe, the more you can learn from others, and the more others can learn from you. That's it for today. I'll see you guys soon as we continue to take a closer look. So folks, why did the mushroom like to party all the time? Because he was a fun guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so folks, I just flew into town this morning and boy are my arms tired. <laughs> You get it? You get it? Because I'm implying that I flew here using my arms, which would be very tiring indeed because I'm, I'm not a bird. We're not a flying species. <laughs> wow, this guy is great. <laughs> Jokes, right? They're great. One of our greatest uses of our gift of speech. Why can't you tell a pig a secret? Because they always squeal. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> wait, wait, I want to try something. I want to try something. Hey, hold on, hold on. Fine. Think about how incredible all of the gifts of speech are. You've got jokes, you've got singing. To be or not to be. <gasps> Let's try to be! Oh, um, psst. That's not the line. Yeah, I know, but mine's way better anyway. I mean, Shakespeare's great and all, but what's he even done lately? <laughs> you even have fun stuff that's not based around words, like beatboxing. <laughs> That was incredible. There's no way any of us could learn how to do that. Wow, that was pretty amazing. Well, have you ever had an idea that was like really hard to communicate? Like you knew what you wanted to say, but you didn't know exactly how to say it. Well, our voices and the sounds that our mouth makes or make up all of the words in our dictionary. And I mean, that's just English. There are languages all over the world. Like uh, Chinese, for instance. It's not just what you say, but how you say it that changes the whole meaning of your words. Well, that's true for English too, Kyle. How so? Huh? There's a big difference between thanks a lot, Kyle, and thanks a lot, Kyle. Okay, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, how do you like to use your voice? Are there any favorite things that you like to talk about? Oh, um, mine is how much I love my friends Aww. and how lucky I am to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like correcting people. And boy, does it feel good. All right. Uh, well, what else do you like to use your voice for? Um, are, are there any ways you like to use your voice that you really love? Oh, yes! I love to sing. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm determined to learn how to beatbox. <gasps> I'm so close. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm yeah, I heard it somewhere in there. Me too, me yeah. too. Uh -huh. However, you like to use your voice. Remember, uh, you were created to use it, so use it to the fullest. Sing. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Tell jokes. <laughs> Learn how to beatbox. No matter how you want to use your voice, remember, it's a gift, and we're all way better off for hearing it. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on A Closer Look. <laughs> oh, man, learning how to beatbox is exhausting. Oh, yeah, you look pretty beat. <laughs> oh, I did it! Did you hear that? I did it! I did it! Yes! Yes! <laughs> This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, believe. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe. And keep on looking, looking, looking to you. For where I'm going, knowing you go there too. I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you. I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes.
All of us have things that we wonder about God. Things that just make our mind feel like they're about to explode and go boom. That's why it's great to talk things through with someone that you can trust. Maybe you've heard about Jesus before and how he came and died on the cross on earth for us. And then he rose again. Have you ever talked about that before? Have you ever asked questions or even wondered if you actually have Jesus in your heart? If so, remember, you can talk with others about what you believe. You can focus on God by talking to others about what you believe. Here's a question that you can talk about. What is God doing in your life right now? Go ahead and talk to your mom, dad, brother, sister, a friends even, whoever's there. Go ahead and spend some time and share about what you may believe. I bet he's doing some things in your life that people around you don't even know about. So go ahead and talk to whoever is with you and I'll see you next time.